So the first question or the, the first thing uh, we would, talk, would like to talk is how to start with these technologies. Do you think it's better a big bang approach with a very big architecture for the big data projects in the company and make something big? Or is it better to go for a small project to look for a use case where you can have real advantage of, of the technology and start with a, a more small project? What do you think is the best approach? Because here there is something like a debate around. Who is the first one? <laughs> Thank you. I'll, definitely, I'll take that one. Uh, uh, in my experience, uh, the, the adage that behind uh, every successful large project is a successful small project. Uh, I I've, I've can't think of any times that I've seen a company say, let's go take a technology that we have no experience with and bet the company on it and, uh, and make that work out. It, it really, uh, starting with something small, getting some experience with it uh, is a much better approach uh, in my experience. And I have the sense that a lot of people in this room are technologists in a company, um, and, it, and it's always, um, you know, much easier to sell that kind of project to the management um, by uh, by suggesting a small pilot project and making sure that it's something that can succeed. Um, if the management is not familiar with with big data as a as a concept, it, a demonstration can can make an enormous difference. Um, the one thing I, I will add, because I've seen people do it, is I think. The other problem is making sure that that small project is an actual project as opposed to making up an excuse to play with these systems. Um, I've seen people who seem to have put stuff in place because it was there and they want to play with it. And almost just as bad as the large project that Jonathan is talking about is that project that you didn't really need to do, but you put something together just because the technology is there. Um, making the right selection, understanding what your choices are and why you need to go with something is almost as important as making that technology choice. Okay. Then we have something like a consensus here. It's better to look for a small project with a concrete use case, not something to play around, and to start with that. Okay, and what do you think is the best uh, department or, or area of, of a bank or an insurance company to, to start with this project or to, to have the, uh, the architectural department, a technological, the business intelligence department, the scientific uh, data department, uh, who do you think uh, are the best ones to start with the projects and the technology and, and to, to make the land? Because we have seen different things here in, in Spain. For, for example, if the business intelligence department is controlling the architecture, sometimes it is something like uh, resistance because they are used to to a classical technology technology and then it is like to put the the fox uh, taking care of the chickens so it is sometimes dangerous so who do you think is the one that has to lead uh, this this advance so so i think there is no one category, it really, I think, boils down to different categories. Uh, in finance, uh, which is the market that uh, we've been working for a long time, uh, mostly the risk analysis was uh, usually a good candidate because of two things. One of them, uh, it's a batch system uh, that fits well with analytics, and usually the first to hit the big data uh, problems versus a trading application, as, a, as an example, which is more latency sensitive, and less to hit big data problems uh, to begin with. The second part is the part of application that basically have no choice. Uh, so if you need to do certain things that can't really fit into the existing technology, then that's an easier bet because you don't really risk any, well, well you still risk, but the risk is as opposed to not being able to do that. And those are usually the two good candidates that I found in those type of industries that usually falls uh, nicely into project and then uh, become as successful as you rightly mentioned, I think, choosing the right project, you do need to find project that has value to the business and then it becomes successful. So I think one, um, one area is, is, or one rule of thumb might be just where you have developers working on things. I, I think 
Um, a lot of big data solutions right now are not at the point where you can take an analyst or or sysadmin and say, hey, can you go implement this 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 solution um, f for us? You kind of need somebody with with more technical technical knowledge and more training uh, to understand it. BigQuery may be a, a, a counter example of that, but I think if you're just looking at sort of uh, dipping your toe into the into the big data ecosystems and and starting to um, to be able to handle larger and larger volumes of data I think you I think you kind of need to start with where you have have engineers that you can you can throw at the problem uh, though I would add that I, it's it's you also have to have the analysts to throw at the problem some somewhere I mean the Big data is this interesting crossover area between questions that have traditionally been answered by statisticians and, and analysts and problems that have traditionally been solved by engineers. And um, you need both. You have to have the good, the good questions. And I think engineers often ask very good questions. But uh, you need to have the, the input from the management of the, of the company um, through perhaps an analyst or, or a business intelligence person in order to know what sorts of questions that you know need to be answered and that's that's crucial to getting the project continued funding right is that the management is happy with the quality of the answers they're getting but I, I think the sophistication now is coming often from the developer side and I, and I think your point about uh, the business intelligence uh, department being the fox in charge of the the hen house um, yeah but uh, but but the general point there I think is sound which is that um, you have to, you, management has to buy in to the fact that there's a problem. They, they have to want, uh, they have to want change. They have to w be willing to try something new and uh, not just say, well, let's, let's throw some more money at Oracle, right? If you've got people staying, saying, well, if, you know, if we'd given Oracle half a million dollars, we'd, we would have solved this uh, a month ago. We, what are we doing here spending time on this still? Um, you really, you really need to have people willing to try something new. Not, you don't want to be selling them that they have a problem, at the same time as you're trying to give them a solution. It's mud. It's it's going to work much better if they recognize that they have a problem and they're willing to look for the solution. Related to this question, uh, we were talking, uh, taking the coffee, that um, it is very important, the systems that you saw the, in the first presentation, um, it was really amazing how they improve all the water and the uh, energy generation and so on. But the system and the technology was very important, but it was uh, really very important or um, the people that is doing the, the algorithms to, to improve this and, and all the data scientists that were behind those systems to improve uh, at the end, well, the, in Los Angeles, the circulation, the roads and the smart systems and all these people. So they, they are really important. How important they are? Because in, in Spain sometimes we have the feeling in big companies, telecom, banks, insurance, that you are going to buy a, an airplane, a very good airplane, very sophisticated, but you don't have the pilot to, to drive it. So uh, how important is it? Um, well, I can, I can add an important detail to both of those examples that um, perhaps I should have mentioned in the, in the talk, which is that in both cases, a lot, of the, um, a lot of the software they used was written by employees of, the, of those organizations. And, um, and it's rare to see that in government organizations um, where the, the laws are sort of written to force people to hire contractors to do that sort of thing. Part of the dam software is written by a contractor, but all of the city traffic light software is written by engineers who work for the city of Los Angeles. And they are traffic engineers, mostly, who then started writing software. They had to bring in software engineers eventually because it became a big data problem. But in both cases, um, domain expertise is the, you know, a way to think of it. The, the people who developed these systems were people who just had a total command, an absolute command of what it, of the problem that they were working on. Um, there are plenty of people who can who can approach problems that they're not already deeply familiar with, but in in those cases in particular, it, those um, 
that software grew up gradually over several decades because um, the people and, and the people who were building it were internal and they were experts in the, in the field. It's hard to it's hard to do that though from from scratch, you know, in a short yeah. period of time. But for Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, the algorithm was very important because it went from four percent to ten percent. Six percent is quite important. So uh, it seems that you have to take care of that part also, no? The data scientifics. Do you think the universities or are keeping the, the, the base and, and are preparing people for this data analysis that, that, that we have in the future or we will have in the future? So I think the university question is a tough one. In fact, we were speaking in the speaker's lounge earlier about the idea that, that so many people are coming out of school right now, for example, knowing Java rather than C or C++ or anything else. And I think if you're teaching people Hadoop today, you're going to teach them Hadoop 1.0. And then by the time they come around, MapReduce has been replaced with Yarn and all of the other things that are happening. Or are you going to teach them the fundamentals? So understanding algorithms, for example, rather than learning Java specifically, understanding how to do data analysis at large scale, understanding how to architect these systems as a fundamental is probably much more important than teaching one system in particular or one set of systems because it's so hard that by the time you get a curriculum together, you're out of date for whatever the industry has moved towards. <coughs> And to elaborate a little on what John was saying, I think it actually takes a team to make this work. I don't think one person can do it. Because one thing I realized when I started working in this is when I started working in big data, I had no idea what linear regression analysis was, right? I didn't study that in school, even though I studied math. Um, so you get, um, you build teams with different uh, strengths, right? And um, the people who are good at building the tools that you want, the people who can build you know, the languages on top of Hadoop or whatever, aren't necessarily the people that understand the right statistical questions to ask. But the people who can do the statistics maybe have some notion that the right data is there, but they couldn't write a tool necessarily to efficiently do that. They can write a first pass at it, a first take, but it'll be kind of gross and inefficient. And it'll work for a little while until they need to go to somebody who's really their core competency is writing software. So I, I think it comes down to you build teams of people that can do this. Yeah, I think it's important to be self-aware enough too for, for, for an organization to recognize that, you know, you know maybe, uh, maybe we're not ready to be early adopters of Hadoop or Cassandra or MongoDB or whatever, right? Uh, some, sometimes technologies need a little bit longer to mature before they're ready for a more mainstream audience. And, and certainly some of these big tools, are, uh, big data tools are starting to get there. But I think you do need to recognize that uh, you know, some organizations should take a more cautious approach than others, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think that the, the few references or examples that comes to my mind with regard to the university involvement in education for big data. I mean. It was grid computing, which was uh, vastly, I would say, generated by universities. Uh, there was this Globus project and all of those things, and I think we all realized that that project wasn't getting the momentum that it supposedly had in terms of potential. On the other hand, if we look at the pattern of what did work, and how come we take a technology that is so dramatically different than what people used to do and still being successful, the pattern that I see is almost the following. We have the uh, Google and the Amazon of the world becoming kind of the new IBM and the new Oracle and the new leading, but the difference is that they're eating their own dog foods and therefore when they pitch for something, unlike Globus and unlike the university-based project, you know that it's going to work because they've, they've been using it. Uh, and, and they also come with the right compromise and we all know, that, especially in, in big data and NoSQL, is that it's, all, it's a world of compromise. And defining or finding the right compromises uh, that are practical can be done mostly by people who are actually eating their own dog food and are building those large systems. And so I think that the involvement of uh, universities in this movement is, is, for me, is very disappointing. And I think that there is a much better potential to participate in those open source projects and get people that are students to be part of open source projects. And for whatever reasons, universities are kind of reluctant for being part of that uh, open source movement uh, from different reasons because it's, it's, at least in Israel, for example, it's because it's not pure research. It's uh, other reasons, but I think this is a role that I would expect universities to be more uh, active about.
So I think there's a, a follow-on to that, which is um, with big data, you need lots of lots of machines. You need a cloud. And universities don't often have the resources to have their own their own cloud. And if they want to do pure research on on you know how can you connect machines machines better, when you get to a certain scale, uh, unless you're a Google or an Amazon or a Microsoft or, or one of the one of the big big players, it's, I think it's going to be difficult for good research to, to come out about about sort of big data big data ideas. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a if there's a way around that, and I think if even if they had access to those clouds, I'm not sure they would that the researchers would even know what which questions to ask. I mean, getting back to like you have to 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 come come to this with with real problems you're trying to solve. Unless you're constantly dealing with big data problems, you're not going to know how to get the big data solutions to um, to those problems. Well, I, I, I think that there's there's kind of two sides to that because, on the one hand, sure the you know, uh, universidad here uh, probably won't be working on uh, you know routing across a network of tens of thousands of machines, but students here could certainly get involved with the new uh, uh, pig refactoring of the of the query parser or something like that. So there's there's different ways uh, that universities could definitely get involved, I think, and, and help move the state of the art forward. Uh, well, my last question, and then we can, uh, if you have any question, we can. Um, we have seen uh, a combination of technologies, and, and sometimes we see, well, Big data at the end is like an ecosystem of different technologies working together, as you have explained. Uh, we have seen Cassandra working uh, with, with, with Solar, with Lucene, with an indexing database. And um, we have really liked the idea about the virtual machine because some of these integrations, uh, they are competing or repeating uh, parts of the code and the, the features. Uh, but when to combine? when to use and why Cassandra with uh, Lucene or a tough, a toughest, tougher one, when to use Cassandra with MongoDB, for instance, because I like to be a troublemaker, so. <laughs> well, if you want to talk about the Cassandra and MongoDB, because I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's talk about the combinations, just that. <laughs> I'll try to touch that uh, minefield in a way um, we've been I've been uh, in that like uh, in this industry for 10 years and and there's always the tendency especially if you're a vendor uh, to look at the customer problem and try to solve it and by that you basically want to consume or own the entire stack eventually that comprises that problem uh, I think that's in general uh, the tendency but that's also a mistake uh, a mistake that I can look backward and say, well, there, there are definitely certain things that I wouldn't do if I would go backward uh, on that regard. And the temptations to actually try to own everything is, is very big because it usually looks from a technology perspective a very little step that you could add, very little optimization. Uh, in big data, I think that that option even cannot really um, uh, exist mostly because uh, the type of problems and the specialties in terms of solutions that you need to cater for the different problems, as you, I think, laid out in your presentation, is such that there's not going to be one solution that's going to cover everything. There's no going to be one that is going to be good for batch and good for real time, good for SQL-based analytics and good for uh, big queries and good for all of those type of things in the same, if you like, box. And so I think that it's uh, mandatory that solution would integrate well with, together, then try to conquer the world in many ways. <clears throat> so I think one of the times you want to try to combine is when you identify something that you're sure everybody needs and you've seen it work somewhere and you know it succeeds, right? If you just start out from the beginning and try to plan this, you know, the old waterfall model design from the beginning, I don't think that's going to succeed. If you sit there and just say, okay, you know, big data needs this new feature and I'm going to add it and then everybody's going to integrate to it. People won't necessarily integrate to it. So I think it, 
comes down to a test of build it somewhere and see it work and then figure out how to share that with other systems um, and, and see that other systems are replicating this and realize, okay, this is something everybody needs. We need to pick one and then we need to work together with people on how we integrate that. Intervention. We are opening the question and answers uh, okay. time, but please go okay. ahead. Um, I just, uh, short, short response, but I just think that when you, when you have big data, it's really hard to have a one-size-fits-all solution, and that's why you may need Cassandra and MongoDB. You may need um, five different types of, of NoSQL uh, storage engines. You may need five different types of, of, of query engines, because each one is, can be optimized to do something very fast but the because the data size is so small or so large the penalty for failure is so is so large if you take a little bit extra time per per record then you know it could be it, it could be a massive massive problem or if the workload is slightly different then then it's going to you know it, the 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 time it takes can can go up by orders of magnitude so i think you're all, you're going to need lots of different types of, uh, of, of solutions. All right, so thanks a lot. Um, I wonder if there are any questions here. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, contribute to maybe clear some misunderstanding. The university and the Spanish university is hosting this event. So the relationship with open source uh, is something that uh, maybe they want to have a say in. But anyway, uh, please go ahead. Is there uh, any question that you would like to ask? This is not a question, it's only a comment related to small projects, big projects. Uh, really, I think that uh, it has to do with attitude. And if the small departments or the engineers or developers at the business have the aptitude, and also the managers, the projects, it, it, it doesn't matter if the project is small or bigger. It depends if you want to push your company to the front of, the, of your competitors, if you want to innovate. So uh, mainly, I think that in the business, uh, in the businesses in Spain, seldom uh, have an attitude to innovate. Probably mostly banks, actually, because the need of the of the market, but not not, not, not so much. Hello, I would like to comment about the Spanish University <laughs> because. Uh, as you know, we are helping the, the open software world. A lot of people here that have studied here or collaborate with us know this. But uh, I must say that sometimes, even the, for the, the open software projects, it's hard because if we engage a lot of, let's say, not very expert students, some of the open source projects are not very patient with them. So, I mean, it's also hard because they only don't go the very good ones, but also the bad, because we have all kind of students. And sometimes the interaction with them, they are not very patient in, in the, I don't, I don't say your projects, but in the past we have some experience that they throw our student out because they were not smart enough. So uh, it's a very hard problem to, to handle a lot of students and, and because you don't know what are the, the good or the bad till you put them in the, in the open project. Questions, please? Hi, um, I, I work for a consulting company. We work a lot for uh, big financial firms, and we're seeing a lot of interest in big data technologies, but we're also seeing different departments in the same firm running their startup POC projects. And we're seeing further down the road a, a potential conflict, because obviously you don't want to have you know, two or three Hadoop clusters in the same company. So the question really is, is there anything in terms of technology or, or in terms of process that can help, uh, you know, set up a, like a multi-tenant uh, cluster where you have, uh, you know, a, an array of big data technologies. Sorry, Brandon. Maybe we need the microphone. Sorry, um, Alan may be better suited to, to explain this than I have, but um, my understanding is, at least with Hadoop, the last couple of releases, some of the things that have been added are things like quotas. Specifically, the way it was explained to me was because multiple departments had Hadoop clusters, rather than having three Hadoop clusters, having one Hadoop cluster where each department has a fixed set of resources that they have access to. 
<laughs> yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, it was just observed in big users of Hadoop that you really do want to push clusters together as much as you can because you want to have that shared data set. Um, but you have to find some way to divvy it up. So quotas, queues, and those kinds of things have been put in and, and better security. To, to answer the question a little bit, though, I mean, part of what you're getting to is the homegrown flavor of this. I mean, we're saying take a small cluster, take a, sorry, take a small project, start out, try it. A big enough company, you've got that going on in a lot of places. I, I don't know that that's all a bad thing, right? I mean, competition is good, <laughs> and it, it helps you you know, if different people try different things, it may turn out, as you said, that the tools they picked really are the best for their particular case, and you really do want multiple tools. It may also turn out that one tool is better than the other, and another group didn't make the best choice for whatever reason, and that competition will help get that out. So I actually, maybe it's a slightly painful process, but I actually think it's a good process. Yeah, and I think if, if you go to the point where launching a Hadoop deployment is gonna be very simple and fast, then you're gonna create, if you like, multi-tenant environment that fits different departments. So for example, if the process of creating one could take 10 minutes, uh, build your own cluster, and then you could have one in your local cloud, one in the public cloud, one in the bare metal, then it's gonna be equivalent of multi-tenant in terms of uh, the ability to share the same distribution of the same infrastructure using that. So there are tools like Chef and Puppet that do a pretty good job on that. Uh, I've talked about Cloudify and how we enhance those tools. Uh, but, but I think that's kind of a, an easy way to do things in that regard right now. And I think uh, building automation around that would, would give you a lot of, of what I think you're looking for. Last quick question, very quick, if any. Yes, very quick. Hi, my question is how to define a big data because supposed to go the boss and tell what is big data? What is this? Is a is a data? Is what kind to resolve? This is the question. Always to both to, to to repeat this question. That was a quick question, but a very big one. <laughs> so just one answer, please. Yeah, the the two answers that I can give you that are simple. One of them is things that you can't really do with your existing relational database. And that could be not just because of capacity, it could be because of velocity, meaning the, the speed in which data comes in and also the flexibility that you need into the schema, that the data keeps on changing. Uh, usually that would be the easiest boundary where we would say, well, it's, a, it's probably a big data problem because it doesn't fit the existing type of solutions. Other than that, you could get into a much more complex definition of what is big data, but Practically, it's not going to get you further. Or, right. Cor, I can't remember who said this, but someone said, you know, big data happens when the cost of deciding what to throw away is greater than the cost of storing the data. <laughs> Very good. So please, guys, put your hands together for this uh, magnificent roundtable. <laughs>